Hi everyone, I'm Christy Taylor. Today I'd like to show you how I created this canvas. Just look at that gorgeous steampunk creation. I just love steampunk and I love all things rusty and old. And this little piece here turned out so much better than I had imagined it would. I found a new addiction in these Relics and Artifacts by Sandra Everson. Um, I don't know how I ever lived without them, but I finally got my hands on some, and this is the first piece that I had in my mind. Let me show you how I did it. Um, I've got my hot glue gun out, and I've got a piece of lace that was from an old curtain that I got at a yard sale for like a dollar. Uh, this thing is huge, and it's this big lace curtain like your grandmother has hanging in her living room. And uh, I just keep cutting pieces off of it, and it's perfect to use on the background of canvases because it gives great texture without a lot of weight. Now, I knew that this piece was going to be quite heavy by the time I was finished. So, you know, you have to cut back on that wherever you can. And if I can create a textured background without adding weight by using modeling paste or anything like that, then hey, that's what works. So I've glued it down and I'm just kind of tapping it down with my hands. Um, be really careful if you do that because hot glue is hot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't ask me how I knew. I, I heard about it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I mute the video so you can't hear the words that I say every time I burn my fingers. And then I do the narration so I sound professional. <laughs> Anyways, I'm trimming the edges of the lace off the canvas. Um, just doing a rough cut. Um, we want it to be kind of rough and look old and tattered. So that's what I'm aiming for here. Um, and then the pieces of canvas that show around the edges will accept the paint a little differently. So it kind of frames the piece in for you. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing here. Once that's all trimmed down, I'll use the glue gun to tack the edges down um, anywhere where it's still kind of loose. Uh, this frame I also got at a yard sale. Um, I love thrift store shopping for art supplies. Um, I find so much inspiration and so many really cool pieces that are, you know, quote unquote vintage. Um, you know, this, this frame had great texture and a beautiful form and I got it for like a buck. So, yeah. It looks good and I like it. And it was cheap. So that's even better. Here you see me gluing down a bunch of different stuff for my stash. Um, gears and circles, some chipboard pieces. Um, the larger gears I got from a little store called Retro Cafe Art. Um, she has great pieces for mixed media that um, also provide you with a lot of inspiration. Um, here I'm just using a wind block and gluing that inside the frame and that's going to help lift the Merlot Rose heart up away from the frame so that it helps it show up. Uh, I don't know if you know what a Merlot Rose is, so I know a little bit, so I'll just share that with you. Um, a Merlot Rose is a charm where you place your heart's desire inside the little frame and um, say a little prayer and hopefully a miracle will come from it. So, in my mind, um, the person who made this Malakros is wishing for her heart's desire, which is her one true love who has passed away. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's where I'm headed with this. Now, I wanted my heart to be a little different. I didn't want to use the flame that came with it, so I'm using a chipboard clock hand. And I've used a um, bottle cap to help raise it up off the canvas. 
and now you see me gluing some gears and different little metal pieces behind the heart and then I hot glued the wings onto the heart. Now everything gets a big coat of gesso, um, even the Milagro's heart, the relic, gets a big coat of gesso. This will help the paint stick to it all later. Uh, it took me quite a while to do that so I fast forwarded that and skipped a bunch of it so you didn't have to watch me paint the whole thing. And pow, just like magic, it's all coated with gesso and we're just going to dry it with a heat tool. Now let's add some color. I've mixed up a bunch of different paints. I have some art anthology paints, which I added pouring medium to. Um, I needed them to be a little more uh, fluid so that they would go down into the cracks of the lace and the gears. Um, here I'm using some art anthologies minks. This is a new ink that they just came out with at CHA. And I'm also using some golden fluid acrylics. Um, all of these things will kind of go into all the crack, the nooks and crannies and cracks and um, fill in the little gaps so there's no white spots. Now I'm using a light blue. Uh, this is Baby Blue Eyes by Art Anthology to paint behind the heart. Um, I used the lighter color there to kind of draw the eye into the center where the heart was. So. In the end, this will help the heart to stand out nicely. Now I'm just mixing different blues and greens, uh, trying to create a patina. I love things that are old and rusty and have been sitting outside for ages. Um, I love the colors that nature creates for us. And sometimes in my art, I like to try and recreate that magic that nature provides by uh, creating a patina. Now you see down at the bottom that instead of using the flames that came with the hearts to um, go on top of the heart like the sacred heart, I use them as a design element and they're at each end of the frame. Now you see me adding Golden's Nico or Quidacrinone Nickel Azo Gold. It's a big mouthful, but it's a beautiful color, and it's great for creating a patina. Now I'm painting the heart with that same color, but uh, this is the paste instead of the fluid. Just giving it a nice coat. I love that color, so pretty. And I'm adding some of that same color onto the background to kind of bring it all together. This piece took me probably about five hours to make and through the magic of video editing uh, we cut it down to like 13 minutes so that's pretty awesome. Now I'm just coating the heart with uh, reactive metal paint. Um, this paint has an activator that you spray on top and because it actually contains like true metal parts, when you spray the activator on, it starts the process of it creating a uh, real rust. And I love all things old and rusty so if I can create that it's even better. Now after I had done that, I decided that I really wanted the heart to be the center of attention. So I'm just putting on some gold leaf. I'm actually just tapping that into wet paint with a dry brush. So you'll see me add a layer of paint with one brush and then use the dry brush to press it in place. wet paint and then gold leaf. Just repeat that until the heart is finished.
Now I'm just using a sponge to um, dab some of that gold reactive paint all over the frame, on the heart and the wings, and also on the gears that we have in the background. And you watch like magic, they just kind of pop up off the canvas. I'm also adding some to the background uh, where the lace was. And then you'll see me with um, a little bit of green and more of that nickel azo, nickel azo gold around the edges of the frame. This kind of draws the eye into where the heart is. And I'm adding the skull to the center. And I changed the color of the skull a few times. And then finally decided he needed to be a bright, vivid green so that it would stand out. And just drying it with a heat tool. And that's pretty much all there is. I sprayed the activator on, allowed the rust to take effect, and ended up with a beautiful piece in the end. Um, I encourage you to get you some of these relics and artifacts, and also to visit thrift stores um, for art supplies, because it's a great resource. You can see that that frame just fits perfectly. It's the retro style and the movement and curves that it has were a perfect way to frame the heart. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Thanks for watching my video. I hope that I've inspired you. Please give me a thumbs up. And if you create something similar, let me know so that I can see it. I'd love to see other people's artwork. Look at all that gorgeous, gorgeous texture and color. And that beautiful heart, of course. Please stop by my blog at christytaylor.blogspot.com and find me on Facebook, Christy Taylor Designs. Thank you so much for stopping by today and watching my video. Have a nice day.